We all know that Mr. Mitchell invests in any viable project back with qualifying test data. We lost the Atlas contract over the weekend. Mr. Mitchell was asking about your little project. I think he finally wants to see it. Did you bring your notes with you today? Did you bring your notes with you today? Did you bring your notes with you today? Oh, come in. You wanted to see me, sir? Oh, yes, uh, BD Dine. Come on in. Uh, have a seat over there. Thanks. You know, BD, um, you've been with us for quite a while. Yes, sir. And as I look back into the historical pages of this great institution, I recall with pride the landmark projects that you've helped bring to life. Hey, um, remember Project 5 and how mad Thomas got when the modulator misfired and disintegrated his new loafers? Well, anyway, that's kind of what I wanted to talk to you about today. See, um, BD, there's been some changes within the structure of our company recently. Uh, and in order to retain our current valued staff members, there's a need for some modifications. Modifications, sir? Uh, yeah, d d don't worry, I I'll explain. But, but first, there's someone very special I'd like to introduce you to. Uh, Dolores, uh, you can send him in, please. Beatty, uh, this is our new owner and CEO, Professor Wilkins. Oh, how do you do? Uh, in, in case you haven't heard, Professor Wilkins has been promoted to Chief of the Bureau of Business Licensing and Regulation. Thanks for the introduction, Mitchell. But I'm sure she's heard all about me. Haven't you, Beatty? Uh, no, sir. Actually, I haven't. I guess you don't read the paper or watch TV. Then I'll cut to the chase and get right to the point. You and a whole list of other private sector employees are going to be out of a job. That is, unless you can prove your worth by qualifying for membership in our organization. Unfortunately, very few of the other applicants, like your pal Spiff Johnson, had anything to offer. Mitchell here was kind enough to mention some project you've been working on. What is it? Oh yes, Project 9. Tell me! What do you have to offer us with Project 9? I was beside myself with terror. For years, I attempted to perfect Project 9. At home, in my spare time, late nights. I always believed in the development of its theories, despite the arrogance of those who said it couldn't be done. Now, this huffy, big government bully was ready to pounce and take it all away. So I had to act fast. Well, you see, sir, Project 9, it's just kind of a hobby of mine. You know, something to work on in my spare time. But perhaps you'd be more interested in Project 8. Now there's something a whole group of us have been working on right here at the Institute. But there was no response, just uncomfortable silence. Mitchell must have told him something wild about the laser diode scone, though as far as he knew, it hadn't even been tested yet. I looked over and saw Wilkins' evil glaring eyes staring at my project binder, which I foolishly placed on the floor next to my chair. I had this funny feeling he wasn't gonna just let me walk out of there with it, so I picked it up. Then, two guys entered the room. I could hear a squeaky voice giving instructions over their tiny earpieces. The situation quickly escalated to a moment of tense anticipation. I'd stalled as long as I could, but now it was time to make a decision. Uh, Beatty, why, why don't you just show us what you have there in that binder? Yeah, um, 